kids, this is Tracy from the Rugged Outdoors. Hope you're all doing well in these uncertain times. Unfortunately, we're supposed to come down and see us this weekend, which hasn't happened. But never mind, we're going to bring a little bit of what we were going to do onto you now. One of the things we would have been doing with you while you were with us was open fire cooking. The main thing would have been bannock, which is a traditional Scottish bread. There's a bit of history behind it, which we'll talk about as we go along. And believe it or not, you only actually need two ingredients for this type of bread that we're going to make, which is flour and water. The flour doesn't matter if it's self raisin or plain flour, they both work more or less the same. What you need for this is about a cup of flour. If you haven't got the little measuring cups, don't worry about it. Set a set of scales out and you need 100 grams of flour and that will give you what you need for this, for this. Pop it into a bowl. So one thing I really should have said before I even poured the flour in there was make sure all your surfaces are cleaners and really wash your hands. You are going to put your hands in here so they must be clean. So we've got our flour in the dish, the next thing we need is our water. Make a little well in your flour, just like that. Then what we're going to do is pour a bit of water in. We've got about half a glass here yet, we do not need anywhere near that amount. All you're going to do is fill your little well with water. This is where it starts getting messy. Pop your hands in. Fold the water and flour together. And just knead it together. If you think, mmm, a little bit too dry, which this is, pop dot more water in there and keep going what we're looking for on this is like a pizza base consistency so if you're making bread pizza base that sort of thing and just keep knitting it together if you do by any chance add a little bit too much water just put a little bit extra flour in there it'll all come together We'll try and use only the flour that you put in to start with. One of the reasons for that is in bushcraft is what you've been doing with us this weekend. You won't generally have extra flour with you where you would obviously have extra water. So adding the flour is sometimes a little bit harder because you may have run out of it. So I always just add little bits at a time. Bring it up. Bring it together and that's what you're looking for it's like a ball once you're ready now as it stands this can be quite plain and boring I never like that we always like to add something in it now for you guys if you would like to put some chocolate buttons in there put some uh, cheese in it, ham in it, anything you want. I'm going to add some raisins and sultanas. And just add a few in and just mix them to get, mix them in. We like to have this uh, cooked in a frying pan and have it with curries and that's why today I'm putting raisins in. We're going to do it as part of our dinner. So just bring them all in. Right guys, remember when we come to cook this, you are going to be using hot pans and hobs, so please take care. And if you're in the younger age range, ask your parents to come in and give you a hand.
I'm going to set that to one side and just bring the plate forward. I'm just going to pop it on the plate and press it out. Knead it out, just flatten it out. The, the thicker it is, the longer it takes to cook. And so we want it quite thin and just pad it out. And that's absolutely spot on, that's fine like that. Next thing we're going to do is just put a little bit of oil in your frying pan. Just a little bit. And then that's going to go on to your hot ring. As you can see, I've made a second lot of bannock mix. The first one is for our main course, which has got raisin sultanas in there. This one is going to be our dessert. So this one, we can actually put chocolate spread inside it. So all we need to do is your chocolate spread. I'm just going to spread it in. Just in one half. And what I'm going to do is fold this over, do the half over, just like a pasty would be. And just press the edges down. So don't want any of that chocolate spread escaping out. There we go. And that one's going to be cooked exactly the same way as this one, which is about to go in the pan. So warm your pan up first, or your frying pan, should I say. I'm going to do just lay it in there. Now again, if you're not sure about using hot pans and stuff, ask your parent to come and help you with this bit. After a couple of minutes, you need just to turn your bannock over. You see, it starts to get nice and crispy. Again, that needs two or three more minutes before it's ready and then we'll check. This one's ready now. You'll know by when you tap it, keep quite a, a hollow the noise. <laughs> That's really the best way to test whether it's ready or not. Take so that one out, pop that onto a plate, and now the more scummy, chocolatey, delicious one. That lives in. Pop it in the pan and just leave it there to cook away. Two or three minutes on each side, that's all it's going to take. We've done that one, which is our main meal one. Now we're doing this one, which is our pudding, our scrummy one. Now it's your turn to go off and make your bannock. We've got a page on our website, which you can contact us on and let us know how you make it and what your favourite ingredients are. Even send us a video of you making it, it would be absolutely great. Remember this one's a pasty shape, so you might need just to press it down slightly just to get the edges cooked a little bit more. It takes two to three minutes on each side until it's ready. Again, after a few minutes of turning it over, just tap your bannock. It sounds strange, but you will hear whether it's, full, whether it's ready or not. Take it out, don't forget to turn your pan off and move it off the heat and pop it up on your plate. Now as we said earlier, this is the main one and the dessert and don't forget that all time tradition. Break it and pass it to somebody else first. Oh, God, that's great. Lovely. Beautiful. But this is my favourite one. But remember, when you go to open this one or bite into it, it is very, very hot because all the chocolate in there is melted. See it dripping out already. Oh, 
kind of get away with that one. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, guys and girls, let's have you in the kitchen and let's see what you can come up with. And don't forget, let us know what you come up with as well. Hopefully, see you soon in our next video, which is going to start concentrating more on the outdoors and looking at the birds and the wildlife.